Amen. Why do you clap your hands for them? They would say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How many is expecting change this evening? Amen. Amen. Do you believe that's possible? I sure do. Why? Because God ain't dead. He is alive and alive forevermore. Tonight I hope you did come expecting change because I did. I'm coming expecting the impossible. Amen. I'm not going to give him a list, something that I can do. I'm going to give him a list only he can do. Amen. Why? Because he is God and besides him there is none other. Amen. I'm going to ask you about this time. Please stand to your feet. How many believes there's power in prayer? Amen. Yes. Amen. I sure do. I believe there's power in prayer. I believe there's power in unity. Amen. Yeah. He said two or three gather together in my name. He said I will be there in the midst. Amen. I hope you didn't come to see me. <laughs> Amen. But we come together to worship and praise him. To get his spirit moving through this house. Amen. That everybody leaves different than they come. Brother Ray Mullet, take us to the Lord in prayer. Tonight, I think if the body of Christ set her head back to seek God and pray, I believe we'll see things. <laughs> Listen, when he said the eyes has not seen, ears has not heard what God has in store for his people, I believe he wasn't just talking about heaven. I believe he's talking about right here, amen? I believe there's a kingdom that we can walk into. That kingdom living that absolutely changed every aspect of your life. But I believe it's also time the church throw her sleeves up and start fighting back. Amen. How do we fight back, church? On our knees. Amen. And through prayer. Amen. We together have a voice that heaven hears. And tonight I want you to know this. That as they begin to sing, I want anybody and everybody that needs prayer for anything, I want you to move up this way. We're going to have us an old-fashioned prayer meeting tonight. I believe God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think. Amen. I think the church needs to come back and get a revelation that God really is real. I think we need to come back together and say, you know what? Whatever I need, I'll call upon Him. He's not just my bread. He's my water. When I'm on a desert and ain't my mouth is dry, I want God as bad as the next drop of water that touches my tongue. When we are like David, Say as a heart, pay it for the water brook. Even does my soul pay after you, oh God. When we get our heart set like that, I'm telling you, we'll have a meeting. Amen. I, I feel stirred this evening. Amen. I really, really do. And I, I just know one thing God's real. I said, I just know one thing God's really real. He's not no fairy tale. He ain't no Cinderella. He's a real God. Amen. Uh, but tonight, I want you to know this. If you need prayer for anything, we want you to come. Amen. I don't care what it is. If you got enough faith to walk up here, we got enough faith to believe with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
convicting power out again and touch the heart of people, not only in this community, but in surrounding counties. We got family members. We don't want them to go to hell, do we? Amen. And I think it's time to really grab a hold and begin to pray. Amen. I think it's time to grab a hold and begin to pray. Any other requests here this evening? Hey man, you believe God touched you tonight? Yes. I sure do. Anybody else? My friend Mercy Chapman, she, her, she's oh, going to go and move in with her oh, biological mom. And she has cancer. And she came back a little bit. Hey, just close. Well, I'm telling you, so when she did move, when she was here, she was into drugs. And she's doing well out of this. That's right. So, so we're going to pray she gets saved. Right? I had one I ever read about that got saved, that born again experience. They didn't walk the same no more, did they? Amen. And that's a care. You think God cares about that care? I believe He does, don't you? Somebody else. Remember Karen Ryan. I need your prayers right now. Amen. God knows, don't He? Amen. Somebody else. I need prayer. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. Jenny, I read on Facebook the other night where my oldest son's oldest boy, he's what we call our miracle baby. He was born at a pound and three ounces. And the doctors gave him up three different times. Told us there was no hope for him. He would never make it. He will soon be seven years old. And I read on Facebook the other day, the other evening, that uh, he was going through some kind of surgery. I don't know what for. They never contacted me. Nothing. So remember that baby in your prayers. And I need prayers tonight. I do. I, I need God to help me make it through a situation that I need to get through. Amen. I always heard my aunt say, if he'll bring you to it, baby, he'll bring you through it. Amen. Uh, that's what I love about God. He's never abandoned me. I've been in some pretty bad situations, Tommy. Some of them I got in myself, but not one time. I heard Jesus running away saying, I can help you here. Amen. That's what I love about Jesus. Amen. Somebody else. No other cares, right? Okay. Ready? Here's what I want. And, and listen, let's pray for revival. Amen. Let's pray for vision. I said, God has <laughs> stirred me. Don't know how he does, he just does it. Amen. But I said, people's dying and going to a devil's hell every single day. And if the church, the body of Christ, will pull together. I'm telling you, we'll form, we'll form an army. I'm telling you that absolutely we'll walk right through them gates of hell and get out of the clutches, all of our loved ones and other people's loved ones. I said, I wonder how many people's praying for their loved ones. Amen? That's something, ain't it? That we might be able to go get it from them. We might be an answer to somebody's prayer. That's powerful, ain't it? But I want everybody that believes God's going to answer a prayer. If you don't, just stay right there. But if you do, you say, you know what, I believe. I'm going to go up here with that fat preacher, and we're going to agree according to the Word of God. And you know what he said? Any two, Tommy, agree is touching any one thing, it will come to pass. That's why he, it ain't my word. If it was my word, you might not want to believe it too full. I'm not lying, but I'm just saying. But he said, I'm not man that I should lie. If he said it, I promise you he can back up every word that he said. And if you believe that tonight, I want you to come up here and we're going to join hands and we're going to pray. Amen. That every situation that was spoken out in the atmosphere, God.
God's going to touch when tonight, when tonight, when tonight. I believe that. I believe He's real. I believe He's able. Really? And we're also going to pray for everybody's heart, the people that come right here to Pilgrim Home, and their hearts has turned away from God. God, get them back. Amen. It's His job. Amen. Whatever it takes, get their attention. That's what we're going to pray. If you believe God will answer their prayers, I want you to come up here and join hands with me as they begin to sing. Amen.
if you don't feel free, so it's no problem. Hey man, somebody got a test on this Molly that's getting ready to drop flat and drop. Hey man. I want to say I love the Lord and thank Him for everything He's done for me. He's done so much for me. I could start now and not be done a hundred years from now. I ain't going to live that long, but I just love Him so much. He does things that I don't even think to ask for, and He'll do it anyways. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. Amen. I know a lot of people say something like this. Well... You ain't really got a test to find, you know. Amen. You, you ain't got to do nothing. Amen. But let me ask you a question. Why does the devil fight you so hard on? There's got to be some power behind it. Revelation is talking about the church that they overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the word of the testimony. How many got the blood of the Lamb applied to your life? Amen. Amen. What's like it? Amen. Come on, Marlene, for the circle on rocks at me. <laughs>
Somebody got a testimony. I just want to praise the Lord tonight for it. It's not a good report. So many times we go into it. I have a very sad project. I had an education this week. And we went in with the expectations of, no. of having them find something. And I didn't. I went in with the idea that they were going to find it with the wrong part. And when they did the EKG, afterwards I asked the lady, I said, well, how's my heart? She said, yeah, it's a good part.
say, just obey the Lord. It's a common phrase, isn't it? But I said there's some things he ain't going to tell us to do. Right? Uh, he desires that we all lift up holy hands. Right? Without wrath, without doubt. Amen. Uh, there's some things God ain't going to come to town every day and tell me to do. He ain't going to, he don't wake me up every morning and say, Jim, you've got to love me today. He ain't going to tell me that. I, I love him. I'm crazy about it. Amen. He, he ain't going to tell me, Jim, it's a, a time to testify. <laughs> he ain't going to tell me. I mean, there's certain times, certain people say, the Lord told me, and he will. Amen. When it's a real have to case, somebody, there's a lot of people get a blessing from the testimony. You, you know that? I said, there's a lot of times people's going through the same thing you're going through. And when you testify about coming out of a, a storm and somebody's in the middle of it, that gives them hope. Hey, man, you understand. I said, but there's some things God's going to come down every day and tell you to do. Hey, man. Be obedient. Hey, man, come on. Turn on us.
hands. It's out of your reach. <laughs> He's big, ain't he? Amen. Somebody else. I want to thank God just for a good day. Amen. 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 I thank God for uh, the workers in the church. Amen. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I really do. And, and everybody that just jumps in, I appreciate you. Uh, these past two days have been uh, rigorous uh, and tough. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I just thank God uh, for the people that jumped in and, and worked it. And I ain't going to say no names, do I? You know. And I'm going to thank everybody that, you know, if you just bought a, a package, <laughs> Amen, you're pushing this church. Amen. I, you messed up. <laughs> hey, I'm just playing. Amen. And, and that's what we just need sometimes, just a little show. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I, I just ask God for now. I ask Him. I ask Him. Just bless you. Is that all right? I just ask Him to bless you. Just to touch you in them areas that ain't been touched in a while. Just to touch you. Amen. I ask Him to do that. Jesus name. Somebody else. How many would love to have a word from God tonight? You know, a word from God is precious. I said, not everybody gets behind the pulpit, it's not a word over the time. I mean they just don't. So when you get one, it's precious. So this man I get ready to call the pulpit, I have confidence in him. He's no word. Amen. I want you to set your hearts tonight. Open them up and get ready to receive from the Lord. I want everybody to repeat after me. Whatever God says, Whatever God says I, accept. I accept. Brother Brandon Tyler. Well, I'll start your Bible. Let's turn to Acts chapter 18 real quick. I was just sitting there thinking and God said in the book of Malachi, He said, I'm the Lord and I change not. Let me say it again. He said, I'm the Lord and I change not. I'm the Lord and I change not. He said, the same God that walked out on that ship and said, peace be still. He can walk out on your ship tonight and give peace. But I was thinking about Jesus just for a second. It's like, oh, we got to give Jesus a little, uh, a little praise and a little thanks. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, back in the Old Testament, if we get to uh, look and if we get to read and see, uh, God didn't have no mercy on people. See, uh, if God seen it, said, uh, and so and so was evil in the eyes of the Lord and said, and God slew him. See, if God didn't like you in the Old Testament, if he wanted to just knock you down, buddy, he done it, but then Jesus walked in, and all of a sudden we got a uh, he gives us just a little room to repent now. Amen. Woo! Come on. Acts chapter 18. Uh, Acts chapter 18. Uh, uh, I got sitting there, got about as nervous as I could be, and I don't know why. Oh Lord. Oh, but I got to reading that, and that's crazy, ain't it? The Old Testament, it said, and uh, a man named Ur, as they spelled the name E-R, said, and Ur was evil in the eyes of the Lord, and said, and God slew him. God didn't give him no slack back in the Old Testament. If you picked up a couple of sticks on the Sabbath day, he said, stone him. Wasn't no slack in that day, but now Jesus come, and uh, give everybody a little slack, and it's like I say, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. That's what the uh, the church is doing nowadays. See, Jesus come and give everybody just a little slack that they wouldn't have to just be on that mark, and see, God would still forgive them, but now, buddy, we've just took a mile. Amen. Acts chapter 18. I'm going to start reading verse 9. I'll just read a couple. I've got a subject I want to talk about. 18 verse 9 says this. So then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Ten, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. I want to back up to verse 9. He said, and then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. Get this, be not afraid. That's on me like, uh, like wild on rice or something, as they say. Be not afraid. Fear 
not. I just can't uh, get over it. That's all I've been thinking about. Fear not. Just put that in your heart. You know how many times the Bible says fear not? A whole bunch more than I can sift through and count uh, in a week or two. But I just want to uh, tell you, we got to think about fear just for a second. What is fear? I'll tell you, fear holds people back. We might not uh, realize what fear is, but the definition of fear is this. It says an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. See, uh, fear is something we think is dangerous. Uh, but there's so many things we're scared of. People are uh, scared of heights and uh, scared of mouses and uh, scared of snakes and all that. But there's certain things that we shouldn't be afraid of that we are afraid of. And the kingdom of God is just uh, going down the gutter right now because of a bunch of uh, scaredy cats. But I'll tell you, uh, God spoke to Paul right here and he said, uh, be not afraid, but uh, stand up. He said, speak, holding up thy peace. I'm telling you, if you're holding your peace when God is telling you to do something, you're working for the devil. He said, uh, you can't serve two masters. You're either uh, working for one or you're working for the other. And God's telling you to do it, but uh, we're just so scared we can't take it. Uh, the Bible says, uh, fear not that uh, the one that can only kill the body. Remember that? Uh, when Jesus was talking about that, He said, uh, don't fear the one that can just kill the body. That's what we do though. Uh, we're scared to death. He said, uh, don't fear the one that can kill the body and He can't do nothing else. That's all they can do. They can uh, pull a gun and shoot you and then you're dead, but that's it. But He said, fear the one that can kill the body because uh, God could kill you if He wanted to. He can do whatever He wants to do anytime He wants to do. That's what uh, people don't understand. He's God. Uh, God can do what He wants to, when He wants to, and how he wants to do it. But he said, uh, fear the one that can kill the body and then have power to cast the soul into hell after that. Don't fear the man. Amen. Fear God. He says, yeah, fear him. Amen. Uh, I want to talk about we get, uh, get fear in your mind. It's uh, uh, something that uh, we think is dangerous or could be a threat. Think about it. Everybody's got some kind of fear. I want you to think about one. I want to, uh, uh, fear is almost like a wall, ain't it? Fear stopped me from a lot of things, but I'm telling you, once you get over it, it ain't that bad. Well, the fear stops, one thing it stops is your testimony. But what is your testimony? He says in the book of Psalms, he says, uh, your testimonies are precious to me. Jimmy was talking about testimonies earlier. They're so precious. A testimony is like, uh, 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 is like just you saying you've conquered the devil or uh, saying what God's done for you. Anytime you give a testimony for God, it's kind of like you're stepping on the death. But if you're sitting back there and God's telling you to give a testimony and you don't give it because the devil's whispering in sweet nothing's in your ear, well, uh, Nikki and Susie's going to think you're crazy and uh, all of that. We get those things in our head and uh, then you're just stepping on God and just letting the devil rule. That's what's uh, happening. If, you, if God's got a word for you, you need to uh, get it out there. That's how Paul uh, got most of his combos going, ain't it? He would walk up to somebody and he would start talking about his testimony. So we all have a testimony of how God saved us if we're saved. And see, Paul would always just start talking about uh, how Jesus uh, come down to him and how he was blinded for three days. That's what Paul done. He talked about his testimony. But fear so many times are blocked from our testimony. One thing that I remember when we first got to church, I'd sit back there and I knew there was something that uh, God wanted me to say. I'd have it. Uh, picked out exactly. I mean, I would know word for word what it would be, Come and on. I would say it. Off. One time I got a verse back here, I was looking for the Bible. That thing was almost flashing to me. It was almost glowing, okay? I knew God wanted me to read it. I didn't read the thing. I was sitting there. I was a uh, chicken. I let the, uh, the baby distract me. I let everything in the world. I let fear grab a hold of me and paralyze me. But all of a sudden, about five or six weeks later, over a month, I sat right there in Sunday school. And anybody's ever been to Sunday school, uh, we go down this side and each person reads a verse. Then we come back up that side and each person reads a verse. Well, I'm talking about five or six weeks later, later, over a month later, all of a sudden we're reading down through here, reading, and the very verse God wanted me to read back there five weeks before, I read right here in Sunday school. Now you tell me that's just a coincidence. I'm telling you, if things like that's just a coincidence to you, maybe you need to examine yourself and make sure you're in the faith. You said that the preaching of the cross is a foolishness to them that don't believe. And so many people think of all this mumbo jumbo about God's foolishness. I'll tell you what's foolishness is that you let the devil overcome you and keep that in your mind. That's what's foolishness. And it won't be foolishness on the day of judgment when God's looking at you. Oh, I like to know how foolish it's going to be. Oh, 
Well, what else does fear stop? Stops you from witnessing to people. Has anybody ever been uh, scared to witness God, to somebody? Anybody. Has anybody ever just been scared to witness to somebody? It's like you'll get this person on your heart and it's overcoming. There's so many times that uh, I've had this uh, first God in church, I've had this uh, thought to witness somebody say at work or something. And it's easy to talk about God in church, ain't it? Because everybody else is on the same page you are. It's easy as pie to talk about God uh, when you're around a bunch of God-believing people. See, you say one word about it, buddy, and they'll just take right off with you. But I'm telling you, if you say something, uh, it's harder to do it at work, ain't it? It's harder to do it at school, ain't it? It's harder to do it at the, uh, the supermarket when somebody's acting like they're having a bad day and God wants you to uh, come over and start talking to them about the Lord. It's harder to do then. Because fear's got you. But I'm telling you, I want you to think of this. If God's put these souls on your mind and on your heart that you should be witnessing to, think of what the very thing you would have said would have made a difference in their life and caused them not to go to hell. Do you think it'll ever be brought up again? When you're standing before God, He said that soul would have got saved if you would have come and witnessed to them. But you let the devil take over you and now you just let them go and now they're in hell because of you. I want you to think about that. Every person that you don't witness to because of fear, you might have just sentenced them to hell because God will send just the right person. I've told it a thousand times that man right there sitting at home right now just had a stroke walk up to me, leaned in the window one day and said, Brandon, you going to church Sunday? I said, sure ain't. He said, you need to be there. He, that cut me to the quick. I couldn't take it. I couldn't. I just laid in bed and thought about that. But if he would let uh, the devil come in and not prove, I talked to him about it later. He said, I was scared to death to approach you. Why? I was just, was just not very long ago, but I was just so brand. I was just sitting there. Uh, Sierra was in there looking at antiques. I'm nobody. Why couldn't Jim come up and say it? Because the devil put fear in you. But if he wouldn't let the devil just overcome him, I might not be standing here right now, might not. Because that had never been spoke to me. I'd have never laid and pondered on that. I'm telling you, when the Word of God hits people, they can't shake it. See? It's like uh, something. I see sell Kirby's and uh, this woman, uh, she said, here's how you do it, son. I've been selling back in plenty for a living now, but she's going to tell me how to do it. She said, you drop it and then you let it eat. See, you know how a vacuum cleaner uh, grind up and you hear like that. He said, you drop it and you let it eat. That's what you do. If God gives you a word, you need to drop it and you need to let it eat because it ain't going to bounce off because he said, my word won't come back for you. But all of a sudden, we don't understand that. Oh, I got to think about cat litter a while ago. Ain't that funny? <laughs> By the litter box. And I said, said to myself right here, I said, that's what God's going to do. He's going to sift through mankind just like a man sifts through litter box. And if there's any clumps on you or anything sticking to you, he's going to scoop you right out and he's going to fling you over the hill. And over the hills in the lake of fire, that's what's going to happen. So if you've ever scooped any litter and flung it over the hill, that's what God's going to do to anybody that's got any baggage hanging on them that ought not be there. Amen. What else does fear stop? It stops standing up for things that's right. It stops a Christian from standing up for the kingdom of God. How many times has people, Christians, just allowed things that shouldn't be uh, allowed? Think about it. Get something in your mind right now. So many times the Bible says, the him that biddeth at God's speed is guilty of the same evil deeds. Anything you bid God's speed to or you allow, you okay it, you're guilty of the same evil deeds. You might not be uh, the one committing the deeds, but if you uh, don't stand up for it and you bid at God's speed, you're guilty of the same evil deeds. Deeds. Just think about it. There's so many Christians. I heard uh, a man talk about the other day. He said, uh, there's so many of them coming out of the closet and, and the Christians are getting in the closet. Ain't that funny? Uh, see, when a gay person comes out to the open, uh, woo, I just felt it whew, tighten up in here. I love it. Gosh, All of a sudden, when a gay person comes out, gay person comes out, they call it coming out of the closet, right? See, anybody ever heard that? But all of a sudden, the Christians are running in the closet. See, the statistics show that 80% of America, 80% of America claims to be Christians. That's the adult. But 50% of America say that they, they would like gay marriage in their church or uh, wherever. They say it's all right. 56% of America is allowed. God says if you allow it, and then you've got these Christians that says this. Anybody ever heard this? Well, it don't bother, as long as they don't bother me, it, you know, as long as they come to me, it don't bother me. 
If it ain't bothering you that we're going like that, you need to examine yourself because God said in His Word, anybody that you bid God speak to, you're guilty of the same evil deeds. Word Christians are running into the closet. Gays are running out of the closet. That's what's uh, going on now. Nobody's standing up for it. If you don't stand up for what's right, anything will go. Anything will go. Oh, my God. I got to think about fear work. So scared to do anything in uh, the, the kingdom of God. He said uh, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. It's because everybody's scared to death. A uh, few people jump in, they get scared, and they jump right back out. See, it ain't, uh, ain't in a very good spot for them. I got to uh, uh, looking up about fear and nature. All of a sudden, I came across the tiger, okay? What's a tiger do? Let's think about this. Uh, the tiger, they said, what it do? We think uh, it's a big cat, right? It can just uh, chase its prey down and attack it. Well, uh, they can't run as fast as a lot of things they eat, so here's what happens. They hunker down in the, uh, in the grass and stuff, and they see this little antelope or whatever they're going to uh, get ready to eat, and they jump out and they give a big tiger roar, you know, like tigers do. They roar. And all of a sudden, it says that the roar is so deep and so powerful that the antelopes can feel it beat off their body, the, uh, the sound waves, and it puts the antelopes in shock and they can't move. That's what fear does to people. It scares them to death. It paralyzes them. You can be walking fine for God just walking down your merry little way and all of a sudden the, uh, the devil roar at you one time like a big tiger and you freeze, you lock up. But if the antelope would have never free, see, the antelope can outrun the tiger any day, but he can just zoom right away from it. But it puts that little fear in its mind. It walks up, can't move. You'd see, there's a, a, a penguin called a fairy penguin. I thought this was funny. You know? And all of a sudden, these penguins, they'll go out and set their nests for just a few hundred feet from the, uh, from the shoreline of the ocean here. But uh, all the adult penguins will waddle out there, uh, you know, before daylight, before anything's out. And they'll run out and they'll get food for their young. But all of a sudden, they'll get back. <coughs> and they'll all band up together, you know, 20, 30, 50, however many of them they are. They'll band up together right at the edge of the ocean. They can just see their nests right there just a few hundred feet away. And said they'll all look one way, and then they'll all look the other way, and they're in sync. They're all together, okay? And then they'll start waddling toward the edge. But they said just about 10 or 12 feet, uh, once they get out of their safe zone, the ocean. See, the ocean's are safe zone, buddy, because if things can move like a fish, they can outrun everything. But on land, see, they're just waddling. They can't move that quick. But all of a sudden, said once they get about 10 or 12 feet out, said all of a sudden, buddy, they'll just turn back. And run back to the ocean. So here you got 50 penguins one on this way. They get 10 or 12 feet. They turn back and go back. And they said, oh, one or two each time will go all the way. But then you got 25 or 30 of them. They'll just go like this. And then they'll turn, get scared. And they'll turn around. They'll run back to the safety of water. But let's think about that. Them penguins will sit there and they'll do that all day. It said it takes them eight or nine hours for all of them to get back to their nest just because they're chicken to walk a few feet. They'll walk, they'll turn around, they'll come back. That's what we do. We'll get a word from God. We'll get vision from the Lord. Maybe we'll start walking that way. But as soon as thing gets a little scared, said them penguins, if they see a shadow, if the wind blows, if a crab rises up out of the sand, they turn around and run back to the water. Any little thing happens. And, buddy, they're just running back. It's like, oh, we don't even realize that. Oh, I got to look it up uh, about fear. Because fear is fear's a bad thing. Is anybody in here scared of anything? Has anybody in here ever been scared to do something for God? I know you have because I have. And, uh, about everybody's the same if you get to look. All of a sudden, there's just a few steps to overcome fear. And I want to talk about it. First, one, first step is to acknowledge your fear. Let's think about it. What scares you? In the kingdom of God, I don't care if my scares you. My scares me, but that, ain't, that don't matter. We're talking about God. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven. What scares you? Acknowledge it right now in your head. There's so many people that, uh, so many testimonies that they've sat on and wouldn't give. It scares people to give a testimony. I've been one of them people. Uh, it scared me when uh, I felt God was calling me to preach. I laid in my bed and cried and Sierra cried. And, oh, I just spit it every which way in the world. I didn't want to. See, I was scared. 
But all of a sudden, figure out what you're scared of. We're scared to testify. Some people scared to witness to people. We got family going to a devil's hell. And it's like, we realize what hell is, but we really don't think about it. I'm telling you, if we sit down every day and just really thought about what hell was and what it's going to be like and what it's going to consist of and how long it's going to last, we'd be running everywhere trying to just get people into the kingdom of God, but we don't really think about it. See, uh, people nowadays try to steer away from talking about hell because uh, it ain't too uh, it ain't too pretty, it ain't too happy. You know, we just all want happy things now, uh, good things. I heard uh, one say this time, uh, I've told you before, but Wayne Runyon was preaching one time and said, preached on hell, they wouldn't let him come back, so that was it. So we talk about love here in this church. He says we're going to love them in hell. That's the truth. I'm telling you, we don't think about things. We don't think it through. Oh, and then so many times we get off track. Oh, Jesus said in Revelation, He said, Jezebel, I give room to repent, and she repented not. So many people's got all this room to repent, and nobody's repenting, I'm telling you. But if we think about it, Smith Wigglesworth said, I will uh, win a soul for God every single day for the rest of my life. That's what he said when he was a younger man, long before he died. And we should all be like that. If we're walking as Christ, we should live as Christ. Amen. Ain't, ain't, ain't that the truth? If we're living in Christ, we should walk like Christ, and that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to just bring everybody in, but we're so scared we can't. We're so scared we can't focus on what's going on. Oh, second, after you acknowledge your fear, what you're scared of, are you scared to testify? Are you scared to witness to people? Are you scared to stand up for what's right when the pressure gets hot? See, it's easy to go with the flow. It's easy to just sit on the fence and pop whichever way you want to pop. Hey, has anybody ever popped it every which way they want to pop? Like them, like them little purses. It's got the two little knobs. You can pop them open, pop them shut. You can just pop left or pop right any way you want to go. That's easy. We can sit right here, me and Jimmy and... Uh, right here and said talk something's all right and I said yeah that's fine and dandy but all of a sudden I walk over here to Jim Hensley and he said no that ain't right and now I'm saying no that ain't right that's easy to do anybody can do that the devil can do that but we need to stand up for what's right acknowledge your fear step two says define your fear define it meaning this what'll happen what's the worst thing that could happen think about it so many testimonies we set on. What's the absolute worst thing that could happen? <clears throat> really. If you're thinking that people's going to think you're crazy and people's going to laugh at you, it's probably because you've laughed at somebody or you probably thought they was crazy or else you wouldn't be thinking that. <clears throat> but what's the worst thing that could happen? All of a sudden they might think it's funny, you said something wrong or whatever, but that don't make no difference because they'll forget about it in 15 minutes. But the one that's looking at you is God. That's what we forget. We ain't realizing who's looking at us. We're worrying about our neighbor looking at us. The Bible says, don't worry about them. They can just kill the body. Worry about the one that can throw the soul into hell after that. Uh, <clears throat> then we got to think about when we're analyzing our fear, when we're defining it, who are we serving by the choices we're making. Absolutely, you got two choices. You can either do what God wants you to, or you can not do what God wants you to. And if you're not doing what God wants you to, that's because you're doing what the devil wants you to. See, uh, there's no just in betweens. There's no, uh, well, I just made that uh, decision on my own. It don't work like that. Something, uh, either God or the devil's talking to you all the time about everything. It's just uh, continually pounding your head when you're uh, laying there in bed at night and your head's on your pillow and you're thinking all these things through your head, buddy. Somebody's feeding them to you. Somebody just they got a big one of those automatic Uno spitters, but just spitting them out, uh, just giving them to you left and right. You got to think about uh, who you're serving, who you're serving. If you give that testimony, you're serving God. If you get scared and you set on it, you're serving the devil. That's it. All of a sudden, Second Timothy one and seven says this: For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So we got those spirits right there and we know fear ain't of God. So if we're letting fear overtake us, we're letting the devil overtake us. He's conquering us. He's knocked us down and he's stuck a big flag in us because he's won. But all of a sudden when we can overcome that fear and stand up for what's right with him, then we've lived for God. Then, then we've uh, knocked that old flag down and kept on walking. Oh. 
We forget about one thing. When I was getting called to preach, I called Sarah's grandpa Frank. If anybody's ever met Frank, they know he's not a cat that's got any fear about what any man would say. That's uh, pretty plain. I've seen the cat just, he'll get up and testify when the whole world's hating him, when uh, everything's wrong. And then uh, somebody will even approach him and uh, say, well, I don't like you, Frank. And buddy, he don't even care. He says, you know what? I don't care. He told me one time, he said, if God be for you, it's what it says in Romans. He said, if God be for you, who can be against you? I tell you, if God's for you, and somebody's against you, it's because you let them. You ain't with God. You not got out of the way and you're letting somebody else sin because if God's for you, the Bible says, nobody can be against you. Nobody. Oh, we talk about uh, the apostles. Talk about people who got scared in the Bible. We think that. Uh, we think now because uh, times have changed. See, uh, them 12, buddy, they walked with Jesus. They've seen Jesus do all these things, okay? There's no way they could be scared, right? There's no way the apostles could get scared because uh, they've been walking with Jesus. But anybody ever read the story about the ship I was talking about just a few minutes ago? So all of a sudden Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the ship. All of a sudden the storm started blowing and everything started happening. And it looked like they was going to sink. And all of a sudden they, they got scared. Uh, they didn't know what was going on. They started, uh, got down there and got Jesus up out of the bed. See, uh, they said we're going to perish. But then Jesus stood up because by the says if God be for you who can be against you he said peace be still but he calmed them right down see there's times that we can be scared and it's okay because there's really nothing you can do about just being scared except pray about it and ask God to take it from you but all of a sudden if you're scared what you do with that fear is what determines how you've been uh, uh, who you're serving because uh, you know if you do what God wants you to do you can get scared but then you can lean on him for support see uh, like a big tent they got the uh, the stakes and all that that supports them lean on God for support he said cast all your cares on me because I care for you if you're not casting your cares on God but all of a sudden you're letting uh, fear overwhelm you and fear take you oh there's nothing you can do all of a sudden, Moses, Moses, one of the mightiest men of God ever had feet, ever walked, Moses. God called him right up with the burning bush and started talking to him. He said, Moses, my people are in bad shape over here, okay? They've got them in slave and bondage. And start telling Moses all these things that's wrong. And he said, Moses, you're the one that's going to get them out. Think about that. Has God ever spoke to anybody and said, you're the one that's going to uh, go get my people out of slavery? I don't think it, God, it, but God's ever said that to anybody. But if he did, I don't know if anybody that I know of, but he'd just stand up and run for God because we get scared. <coughs> Same way Moses did. What did Moses say? He said, God, I'm slow at speech. He starts throwing out excuses like the old Uno card did. Starts throwing them wide open. He said, Moses, didn't I create man's mouth? You know, Moses is saying he's slow at speech, but really he was just scared. He was just trying to throw out excuses. He said, Moses, didn't I make the mouth of men? And I'll be with your mouth, Moses. Just go and do what I say. And that's what we got to focus on today. I'm going to turn it back over to Jim. I don't like to uh, drag things out, but all of a sudden, I just want to say this. We get the fear not from the Bible. I got to think another day and I started telling Sierra how many Bibles are sold in the U.S. and how many times people, here's what they'll do, how many people's ever seen this? But you go in a Bible bookstore and it's almost like going in Walmart. Uh, people's buying every uh, color of Bible and uh, all these medallions that stick all over their Bible and uh, putting their Bibles up and getting a new Bible every uh, 10 or 12 days or so just because uh, they got a, a bend or something in one of them. They always want the prettiest Bible and they always... I want to look the best carrying the Bible, but nobody knows what's inside the Bible. It's like uh, they say don't judge a book by its cover, and everybody's judging the Bible by its outside. They just want a uh, Bible that looks good, see? Uh, they just want to look good for everybody else. That's why I said, oh, woe unto you Pharisees, hypocrites, scribes. That's because everybody's packing their Bible wanting it to look the best, but nobody ever opens it and looks to see what's inside. Amen. Amen. Has anybody ever felt that way? Has anybody ever thought of it? 
How many Bibles? I've done the same thing. I mean, any time that so many times people think that a, a preacher's just pouring stuff on you, most of the time when I'm uh, saying something, it's because it's happened to me too. I went through a, a time not very long ago, brother. I was on there looking 24 7 on what Bible I wanted, how I wanted this Bible to look, how I wanted that Bible to look, what case I wanted to uh, wrap my Bible in. That way it just looked good, son, when I walked in. That way uh, they know I had a good looking. Bible. But all that's foolishness. It don't matter. It don't matter if your Bible ain't even got an outside on it. If you know what's in it, he said in the beginning was the Word. Oh, if we don't know what's in the Bible, we don't know nothing. So many Bibles are sitting today right now on uh, people's nightstands. Go to a hotel and they're in the drawer. I'd say you'd super glue the door shut and they'd never know it. You might, a year later, they might be trying to just see what's in there. Somebody plunder and find out. But all of a sudden, there's so many Bibles right now sitting on people's nightstands and sitting in the back of people's cars and sitting on people's beds even or uh, on their desks where they used to study when they first got in church for the first uh, 15 minutes or so or the first week or the first day or uh, something like that. But now, uh, nobody picks it up anymore. Is that right? Am I just talking to myself here tonight? Or is there just uh, people out there that's got these books and uh, just look at them and want them all pretty and they'll carry it to church? There's a, a, a church up Laurel Creek. they got a, a big bulletin board that said God wants full custody, not just weekends. Let's think about that. Oh, man. That's what God gets a lot of times, ain't it? Just weekends. Just when we can just come out to church or whatever. I'm telling you, the church building ain't nothing. Nothing's what a church building is. Just a bunch of blocks with some nice looking seats and a couple crosses. If you ain't got God on the inside, if you ain't met Jesus yourself and had that reborn experience, you ain't got nothing. Nothing, nothing. Jim, come on. I ain't nothing else I can tell you. Amen. I heard a beautiful definition of fear one time. It said fear represents this. False evidence that appears real. Amen. It's kind of like a mirage. I want you to understand that Satan will stop you. Amen. And everybody does have different fears. Amen. Everybody has different fears. I said, I've gotten beyond my fear of testifying, you know, through my preaching and doing different things. So um, I, I face fears every day of my life, fear of failure. Boy, this is going to flop, amen? But it's one of the things I learned a long time ago. You hold your breath and you go anyway. Uh, I said, uh, I heard a story one time about John Wayne. Uh, how many here have heard of John Wayne? I mean, wasn't he a, a pretty good actor? And they hit saddle up and he'd ride. Do you, do you know that uh, it's supposed to be true? He was scared of horses. <laughs> and I saw a sign in Tractor Supply one time and I thought, man, that is so cool. Uh, it says, you know, by John Wayne, it says, fear. Let's say, courage is when you're scared to death and you saddle up anyway. Amen. I said so many times, and I want to give a little testimony on something because. Like I said, I still face fear every day of my life. Amen. I said, there's been so many times we would go to rent the Roy Collier Center out or something like that. I'd get the thought to do it. Amen. And as soon as that, that thought would come inspired by the Holy Ghost, because first of all, I want you to know the devil will never get you to try to go win people for Jesus. Right? And all of a sudden, I would just catch vision right in my face, and I would jump up, and all of a sudden... Guess who'd come? He don't never miss. He's always right on time. Anytime you ever take a step toward God, the devil's right there going to tell you how many times and how bad it's going to be when you fall. And while I was uh, contemplating the failure and the effects of failure, I was on the phone with the Roy Collier Center and said, I'd like to book it for this day. Uh, I said, fear is given. It's going to happen. But what you do with it is up to you. I said, I heard a man one time say 365 times in the Bible, says, fear not. I said, that's cool. He says, I fear not for every day of the year. I said, that's all right. Isn't it? I said, a lot of people 
They, like I say, you got different fears. But now, with God, you can do all things. Because He has not given you this fear. This paralyzing fear to stop you. Amen? He has given you courage. He has given you peace. Listen to this. A sound mind. Wow, that's cool, ain't it? I know that everything's going to be all right. I know it is. But nevertheless, we have got to take that first initiative step. We do. Well, I'm scared to say Marlena said when she was younger. But it took that first step. What about when you got saved? Do you remember that? All of a sudden, God began to speak to you. And all of a sudden, who, who was right on time? The devil was. What did he say? You can't do it. You can't do it right. That fear. But when that first step toward that direction happened, what happened? Change took place. Why? Because you walked past fear. You walked past fear. Fear can't hold you unless you let it. Amen. Don't let it stop you. Let it fuel you. Be all you can be for Jesus Christ. You've got the greatest one with you that can't nobody do nothing with. Amen. Like my aunt said, if you bring you to it, he'll bring you through it. Just hold to God's unchanging hand. He's always there with you. Listen tonight, we ain't going to give no altar call. Amen. We, we just ain't going to do it tonight. Here's what I want you to do. You change your, your, your way of thinking. You change your heart. There's a turnaround. There's a turnaround. There is a turnaround. When you make up in your mind and your heart, remember what we said before the preacher came? Whatever God says, I accept it. Right? Is that what we said? Something similar? That's right. So what God say? Quit being scared. Quit letting fear stop you. God's with you. And I promise you this, he'll never take you halfway and leave you. He will never take you halfway and leave you. Amen? And don't think the pastor ain't got fears. It might be easy for me to testify, but it might be getting hard on me to go out in the street and minister. Might be, ain't it? And that's what I say. We pray for one another, and we pull together, and we step out as a family. I said there's one thing God stirred in my spirit, is to really form a ministry team to go make a difference outside of the building. Amen? Outside of this church building. Are we going to do it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brace yourself, amen? We're going to stay up, amen? We're going to stay up, David. We're going to stay up. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing people, amen, going to hell and nobody doing nothing about it. Who's going to make a difference? We will. Amen. I heard a story one time about a young man, and I'm going to close with this. The young man was walking across the shore, the big old ocean. And he was getting them little starfish. Pick them up and throw them back out to sea. A man walked by and he said, what you doing, son? He said, I'm saving these starfish. He looked around that man and he saw hundreds and thousands of starfish on, on the shore. He said, son, you ain't going to make no difference in all this. Look, you, ain't, you can't do all this. You, you just can't make the difference. The little boy never said a word. He reached down, he picked one up. Threw it back in the water, he said, I did for that one. <laughs> Kept right on going. Don't let people stop you. You got dream killers out here, okay? Don't let them stop you. Find somebody that will encourage you. Find somebody that will push you, amen? How many received the word tonight? Amen. How many is not going to be scared? Amen. And I want you to know it's okay to feel fear. Just don't let fear operate you. Amen. Anybody else got anything on your heart? Fear's walking around right now. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> it won't sound right. Anybody, no, anybody got anything on your heart? All right. Tomorrow morning, I want you to know Marlena Van Hoos is going to be here. And she's such a, just a blessing. She's inspirational, isn't she? And, and I'm excited. And I want you here in the morning at 1130. I want you to be blessed. Amen. This girl has got so many things. 
that's supposed to stop her. She was born blind. She could have given up, couldn't she? We complain because of uh, uh, whatever reason. This little girl could have stopped, and we wouldn't have blamed her. But she sat down, and she fumbled around with the keyboard, and she learned to play piano. This baby sat down and writes her own music, writes her own songs. And I bet, I'd almost guarantee you, she don't let people pet on her. The song she wrote, uh, the last one I heard that she wrote, is when I reached that city, the last, the last chorus starts like this. I was born blind, but don't feel sorry for me. Hey, ain't that something? Hey, Amen. And yet we let so many things stop us. If you look around, somebody else has always got it worse. No, thank you. Amen. So be here in the morning. We want you blessed. We want you encouraged. Amen. And, and we want ideas of what we can do. Anybody else got anything on your heart? Let me ask you a question. Close your eyes. I don't want nobody peeping, nobody looking, even David. <laughs> if, you, if this word was for you and you accept it, would you raise your hand with mine? You say, God, when you said about fear, you hit me. Put them down. Amen. There were several people who raised their hand. I thank you for your honesty. That's awesome. Amen. That works for me, too. And I accepted it. Why? Because I said I would. Amen. I want to ask everybody to stand to your feet. I want to say this. Thank you for making a part of your evening to come out and be with us. For some of you, I know you're tired. But nevertheless, you're here anyway. For some of you, amen, you've been looking forward to it. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. But my prayer is always the same, that nobody leaves the same way that they come. And I believe the law will leave different this evening. Amen. Remember this, he's as close as the mention of his name. Not just here, you can talk to him all the time. Every head bowed, nobody looking around. I'm going to ask Brother Brandon Toller to take us out with a word of prayer. God, as we come into your presence, Father, as humble as we know how to be, God, we just ask you to always lead us and guide us. Don't let temptation overcome us, but let your will be done and not our own. And we thank you for God and just always ask you to put your hedge of protection around us, God. Lead us safely home, God, and let us be back out tomorrow. God, touch the girl that's going to be coming and singing tomorrow, God, that she makes a safe trip. And just be all she can be for us, God, and raise us up a mighty army for you, Father. And we always give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Matthew, real fast for anybody moves. Matthew, will you ask the blessing over the offer and the money that was raised? Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask you just uh, bless the offering and the money that was raised. Just allow us to use it in your will that uh, will glorify your name with it. May we reach out and touch somebody's heart and change somebody. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. And next Friday, uh, your pastor will be chaperoning the Shell Park High School walk in. <laughs> 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 they must have good. <laughs>